Welcome to Living Hope. In today's message, The Prophetic Parade, Dr. McLuhan introduces us to a side of Jesus most people did not expect to see. On a hill in Galilee, Jesus announced the arrival of the kingdom of God with eight blessings for all who are willing to follow him. Three years later, in the shadow of the Temple Mount, Jesus preached his last public sermon in the city of Jerusalem. He gave the religious leaders eight stern warnings. Today I want to make a connection between the blessings and the warnings that he gave to his audience. In Jerusalem, Jesus preached to a large crowd. The disciples were actually his specific audience. And After Jesus rode into Jerusalem on that donkey that Pastor Margaret and I have helped us, under, helped us understand today, he preached to an even larger crowd. At this time, his specific audience was the religious leaders of the day. In that message, we saw a side of Jesus that most people did not see coming. Uh, no one ever spoke to religious leaders the way Jesus did. It was a stern message. We commend to you the reading of Matthew chapter 23. If you are a religious leader from any religion, Christian or not, I urge you to pay attention to what Jesus said in this chapter. Jesus made it clear to them that the time would come when they could no longer hide behind the religious masks. It is a warning to all of us that Jesus knows our heart and will not overlook sin. Four times in the Gospel of John, Jesus used these phrase, this phrase, I'm sure you'll remember it, my time has not yet come. Do you remember him saying that? And after Jesus had fulfilled the major prophecies leading up to his triumphant entry into Jerusalem, his time had come. And he boldly called out the religious leaders for their hypocrisy and warned them to change their ways or expect to experience the judgment of God falling on them. Jesus began by driving out the people who were doing religious business in what is referred to as the court of the Gentiles, a very important part of the temple. This space was reserved for people from all of the nations of the world to come and to hear the worship, the singing of the Levites in the temple, to smell the sacrifices and the incense going up and draw as close to God as they could at that period of time. The religious people didn't care about the Gentiles. He didn't, they didn't care about the other nations at all. But God does. And Jesus reminded us of what God said. My house shall be called a house of prayer for all people. Isaiah chapter 56 and verse 7. Today an invitation is being offered to people of the whole world to come and draw near to God. Religious leaders who do not want to make everyone feel welcome in God's house, are not doing God's work. And this is where we find the contrast between the blessings that Jesus gave in Galilee and the warnings or the woes in Jesus' words to those who were in Jerusalem. In Galilee, Jesus said, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Matthew chapter 5 and verse 3. In Jerusalem, Jesus said to the religious leaders, Woe to you, religious leaders, because you shut the kingdom of heaven in people's faces. You have ever had a door shut in your face? It's a terrible feeling. And that's what the religious leaders were doing. Matthew chapter 23 and verse 13. Religious leaders who turn anyone away from the presence of God do not know the heart of God. And anyone who turns people away from experiencing God's power and the love of Jesus simply do not know the heart of God. Jesus could not have been more specific. Speaking about the kingdom of God, he said, you won't go in yourselves and you won't let others in either. What a remarkable statement. The second half of Matthew chapter 3 and verse 13. 
I want to say to you today as clearly as I can, there's room for you in heaven. There's room for everyone in heaven. Anyone who said to you, you're not good enough to enter heaven has not understood why Jesus came to earth. In the second blessing in Galilee, Jesus said, blessed are those who mourn for they shall be comforted. We just release a wave of comfort in your life no matter what you're facing today. Jesus was talking about mourning over the pain that sin causes people to experience in their lives. But he was also referring in this context to women who had lost their husbands who were terribly taken advantage of by religious people and leaders who steal from widows and uh, help uh, take advantage of people who are suffering, take advantage of them, do not know the heart of God. If you have lost a loved one, uh, Jesus offers you genuine help And we want you to experience and feel the help of Jesus in your life today. Jesus warned leaders not to take advantage of people by saying this, Woe to you religious leaders who steal from the vulnerable. He said this on multiple occasions. You can see the references there uh, in this text. In the third blessing, Jesus spoke about the reward, waiting for those who are meek, a wonderful word we've talked about Jesus said, blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. That means they'll have a place to stand, a place to minister, a place to touch people's lives. Matthew chapter 5 and verse 5. We learn that meekness is power under control. It is helping people find the path that leads to God. It is walking in the straight path that people talk about in another religion all the time, the straight path, the right path. In Jerusalem, Jesus pronounced this woe to the religious leaders who lead people on the wrong way. And there are religious leaders who are leading people clearly in the wrong way. They're not leading them in the way that Jesus came to show us. Matthew chapter 23 and verse 15. Jesus made it clear that he knows the way to God. He knows the way because he came from God, and of course he knows the path to return to God. He who came knows, and he wants us to follow that path. Jesus said it so clearly, I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life, and no one comes to the Father except through me, John chapter 14 and verse 6. We invite you to follow the way to heaven that Jesus offered to all people. In Galilee, Jesus said, Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. Matthew chapter 5 and verse 6, I'm so satisfied with the presence of Jesus in my life. We release to you spiritual satisfaction today under the wings of Jesus as the Holy Spirit comes and nurtures you today. No one can satisfy our spiritual hunger, our hunger for God, like Jesus does. People long to feel accepted by God. People from other religions say that frequently. All of my life I wanted to feel accepted by God. If you don't feel accepted by God, listen to the words that you are hearing today. People want to have a relationship with the God who created them. Doesn't that just make sense? How could a God create you and not have a relationship with you? When the religious leaders, when many religious leaders are asked, how can I have a close relationship with God? Leaders often respond by saying, do more good deeds and say more prayers. And if you do these things, perhaps God will accept you. Isn't that so empty? Don't you want more than that? To know that you can have a relationship with God. Jesus said, woe to religious leaders who make false promises. Matthew chapter 23 and verse 16. Uh, Jesus went on to call these religious leaders blind guides. I don't know anything more specific he could have said. He said, they are blind guides making promises that they don't intend to keep. I just want to say to you, Jesus will never lie to you. He'll never trick you, and he will never take advantage of you. In Galilee, Jesus offered unlimited mercy 
to everyone. <laughs> don't you want mercy of God? Some people talk about God's mercy, but don't actually experience God's mercy. Jesus said, blessed are the merciful, for they shall receive mercy. Matthew chapter 5 and verse 7. Because Jesus has the power to forgive all our sins, his focus is not on the small things, but on the big picture of having a relationship with him. Yet religious leaders do their very best to find every little fault they can find with people. You ever had somebody nitpick, nitpick, nitpick at you and try to tear apart and just criticize everything about you? Jesus pronounced a woe on that kind of religious leader. He said, you are focused on the minor details when you should be not neglecting the weightier matters of the law, justice, mercy, and faithfulness. Matthew chapter 23, verse 23. These are the weightier things that Jesus wants us to be about. What are the weightier things? Jesus said, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and all your soul and all your strength, with all your mind and your neighbor as yourself. Luke chapter 10 in verse 27, this is an open invitation we have to have a living, loving relationship with God. You cannot love someone whom you don't have a relationship with. It is an invitation from God to have a loving relationship with him. Love is higher than religious rules. Love is the foundation because, as the Bible says, God is love. And when we love people, we see in them what God sees in them. Aren't you so glad God sees more in you than you've ever seen in yourself? Because he loves you and is working to bring the best out in you. <clears throat> this brings us to the very heart of the sixth blessing that Jesus promised. He said, blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Matthew chapter 5 and verse 8, I love this saying. What a stunning statement. No religious people or person ever offered people purity or promised that they would see God. In contrast to this amazing promise, Jesus said to the leaders, Woe to religious leaders who look good on the outside but are dirty on the inside. Can you imagine having the courage to say that? to the highest ranking leaders in the city of Jerusalem in the first century. Jesus was bothered by these religious leaders, and he described them as whitewashed tombs filled with bones of dead people. What a graphic description of unholy religious leaders. And Jesus has a solution to the dirty feeling that people have, people go to the rivers to wash to get the outside clean and hoping that something will happen on the inside, but it never does. We can't wash ourselves clean on the inside. Only Jesus can do that. And people become aware of how dirty they are when they compare themselves with God rather than comparing themselves with other people. When we see ourselves the way God does, Jesus is ready to forgive us for all the sins that we have committed, the sins that nobody else knows about. In the seventh blessing, Jesus said, Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the sons of God and the daughters of God. Matthew chapter 5 and verse 9. By contrast, Jesus says, Don't follow religious leaders' example. Don't follow their example. They do not practice what they preach. Matthew chapter 23 and verse 3. Peacemakers are able to lead people into a right relationship with God. Peacemakers lead people to change the way they think, to make peace with others, and to make peace with God. Peacemakers release God's healing presence into conflict. Now Jesus saved his best blessing for those who suffer persecution for their faith. He said, blessed are you or those who are persecuted for righteousness sake. 
for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. People want up the promise of paradise. It's for those who suffer for righteousness, not for unrighteous actions. Matthew chapter 5, verse 10 and 12. By contrast, Jesus pronounced a woe on the people who were about to condemn him to death. Listen to these words. Jesus said, Woe to religious leaders who murder righteous prophets. Matthew chapter 23, verse 29 through 36. He quoted them as saying this, If we had lived in the days of our fathers, we would not have taken part with them in shedding the blood of prophets. Matthew chapter 23 and verse 30. Yet, These religious leaders denied the prophecies made about Jesus. They thought of Jesus as a false prophet whom they were plotting to kill as he was speaking to them. But we have just heard the sternest words Jesus spoke to people who thought that their lives were pleasing to God. In one text, he said, you will kill somebody and think you're doing God a favor. You are not. These words are a warning to all of us to make sure that we are on the right path to God. And after Jesus gave this message, he left the city and went back to the Mount of Olives to pray for the people who had just heard the sermon that you have heard. He wept as he prayed, saying this, O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, the city that kills the prophets and stones those who are sent to her, How often would I have gathered you as a chicken would gather her hens or as a hen would gather her chicks, as a hen would gather her brooding chicks under her wings, but you were unwilling. As one who's raised chickens, there's something so special about watching a mom gather her chicks under her wings, and you just see seven or eight little heads sticking out and all covered, and Father God wants to bring you under his wings and just keep you warm in times of danger and trouble and cold. Are you willing? He warned destruction was coming to the city of Jerusalem because they did not know the time of his visitation. Luke chapter 19 and verse 44. Today, Jesus is visiting with all who want to have a close relationship with him. Today, your time has come to receive Jesus as your Savior before it is too late. Recognize that your good works cannot save you. Only Jesus can. Father God, save people right now who are listening to this message. Accept Jesus right now. Accept him as your Savior. Father God, fill with your Holy Spirit and heal people who are listening to this message. If you just received Jesus as your Savior, write to me and tell me about your decision to follow him. Next week, we'll continue studying the powerful word of God. Father, thank you for the amazing words of Jesus that make it clear that you want a real relationship with us and not just religious duty. Help us to be authentic in our love for you and carry our love to others this week. In Jesus' name, amen. We hope this message has filled you with living hope in Jesus. If you would like to talk to someone about your spiritual journey, please leave a comment or send us a private message. We enjoy reading your notes and having an opportunity to pray with you. If you received a blessing through this message, please share it with others. We invite you to become a Living Hope Partner by donating as little as a dollar a month through our QR code. Your gifts will help us create new messages and reach more people. Living Hope is a ministry of Ingleside International Incorporated. All donations for Living Hope qualify as a charitable contribution. Thank you for your prayers and support. Next week, we will continue learning together from the Word of God. God bless you and fill you with living hope.